Hello there, lovely people. It's Alex from Nintendo Life here, and today it is finally time for us to review for you Kirby and the Forgotten Land on the Nintendo Switch. This review was originally written by the stupendous PJ O'Reilly for NintendoLife.com and has been adapted for video by me. But anyway, that's more than enough waffling. Let's dive right into things. <laughs> Well, it's finally here. In celebration of 30 whole blinking years of 2D and 2.5D adventures, with a little bit of 3D sprinkled in for good measure, Kirby's first proper fully three-dimensional mainline escapade has now arrived, and as long as you know exactly what to expect from the little pink puffball, it's an absolute delight. Kirby in the Forgotten Land is 100% aimed at younger gamers. It's not particularly challenging, it won't leave you scratching your head over puzzles or pulling your hair out over tricky bosses, but what's here is still hugely endearing and highly replayable stuff, even for those of us who are perhaps slightly older or maybe more than slightly older than the target audience. We've already discussed in our hands-on preview of the game's first world how Kirby and the Forgotten Land issues the wide-open 3D environments of Super Mario Odyssey in favour of tightly designed little play boxes more in the vein of Super Mario 3D World. There's no fully controllable open-world camera at work here, the paths through the levels are framed and revealed just so, and this is a design decision that Kirby and the Forgotten Land sticks to resolutely for its duration, offering up delightful little play areas that afford you a reasonable amount of freedom within their confines, whilst doing a great job of mixing easy, breezy combat with addictive secret hunting and a handful of hilarious new gimmicks to keep things from growing stale. This is not the great big open world 3D romp some may have been expecting, but that's absolutely fine. HAL Laboratory has managed to successfully transpose everything we know and love from classic Kirby titles to this new game, with our little pink hero's exhaustive roster of copy abilities having made the jump intact, here bolstered by a handful of new variants and, of course, Mouthful Mode. It's the bit that's got everyone talking pre-release and, as it turns out, Mouthful Mode is as funny, daft and delightful as it appears in the game's trailer with Kirby warping himself into all manner of outlandish shapes in order to solve puzzles, best baddies, and rescue as many Waddle Dees as he can. Ah yes, Waddle Dees. Kirby's little buddies have been captured by the villain of the piece, a villain who shall rename Nameless here, and stuck into cages that are hidden all about the Forgotten Land, a land through which you must now jump, glide, motorboat, not like that, roller coaster, and uh, whatever he's doing with that vending machine in order to rescue each and every one of your imperiled pals whilst dishing out a right royal doing to the expansive roster of bosses as you go. But it's not all battering baddies, in fact the bulk of the action here is about exploration, about searching every nook and cranny of your surroundings in order to track down as many Waddle Dees as you possibly can. You'll even require a set number of them in order to unlock the final stage of each world and progress to the next area. Each level comes with a set list of five missions in this regard, with each completed mission netting you an extra Waddle Dee or two towards blowing open that final big boss lock. It's all fairly straightforward stuff, you know, clear the stage, rescue all the Waddle Dees, eat a specific number of donuts, defeat a boss with a certain type of weapon, destroy animal sand sculptures, and so on and so forth. But it's these missions that provide Kirby and the Forgotten Land with much of its actual challenge during campaign missions, and a fair bit of replayability to boot. There's more challenge to be found in the game's side missions as well, extra areas that open up throughout each themed world as you progress, little tears in the space-time fabric that suck you into all manner of mini-games to test your metal and net you upgrade materials and coins and so on and so forth. You'll be finding yourself bowling bombs down moving platforms in order to hit switches, using spinning chakrams to grab coin pieces from across spike traps, ice skating across moving platforms, and much, much more besides. It's in these little side missions that players wanting a little bit more to chew on will find themselves most satisfied as meeting and or besting the time records for each course here is actually pretty tough stuff. You don't need to meet any set time to pass the mission or anything like that, I mean, it's still a Kirby game after all, but the platforming challenge is there and it's a stiff one at times for those who choose to accept it. Regarding the game's combat, well, it hasn't been entirely left on the back burner either. There's plenty of enemy types to engage with across the various worlds and every level affords you the opportunity to tool around with any and all of your copy abilities, giving the whole thing a nicely free-flowing, experimental feel. Copy abilities are upgradable now as well, using power 
stones that you'll nab from those side missions we mentioned. A neat little touch that sees your basic fire and sword abilities, for example, strengthened through several levels that go from your bog standard blade or fire attack to blasting hot streams of dragon lava and wielding gigant sword variants that can make short work of the biggest of bad guys. It's classic over the top Kirby, and it's mirrored in a campaign that starts out with the usual forests, deserts, and snowfields before escalating delightfully into much more outlandish fare, which we ain't gonna get into spoiling right here. Don't you worry, you little, uh, selves. In between missions, you'll return to Waddle Dee Town, the game's breezy little hub area, which is slowly rebuilt and furnished with all manner of facilities and diversions as you rescue Waddle Dees from peril. You'll start out with just a cinema for checking out cutscenes from previously played levels, but as things progress, you'll add that all important weapons upgrade shop, Kirby's very own house, an item store where you can pick up health and energy supplies, a load of mini games, flash fishing is currently our favorite, and even a great big bloody coliseum where you can go and let off some steam by battling through waves of the game's bosses in order to earn some special prizes. It's been done in Kirby before, but it's a good. There's a smart core cool gameplay loop at work here overall. Jump in to take on story missions, hoover up Waddle Dees and hunt down blueprint upgrades, do a few side missions and then return to town to sharpen your tools, spend coin down Gacha Alley and bash some skulls into the Colosseum, it's a thoroughly pleasant time all round. It's also a credit to this game that we can't think of a single level throughout this entire campaign that actually bothered us in any way. Usually with this type of 3D platformer, there's some area or specific gameplay mechanic along the way, yes we're looking at you Flip Switch Galaxy, that we see coming and we think, ah oh, no, no thanks. But that's just not the case here, which is quite the feat really given how much Kirby in the Forgotten Land manages to throw into the mix. Over the course of the roughly seven hours it'll take you to blast through the main game here and and double that if you're a completionist and then add another four for post-game surprises, you'll do battle with an impressive array of mini-bosses and grandstanding end-of-level baddies. You'll ride roller coasters, drive boats, race cars, swim, glide through the sky, burrow underground, wobble around in a body full to the brim with water, swallow a vending machine, become a light bulb and part of a theatre sign, and so much more besides. Kirby and the Forgotten Land pulls all these various aspects together, the copy abilities, the mouthful mode tricks, the puzzles, exploration, platforming, and combat into an adventure that's a delight for both younger kids and adults alike. All those mismatching oddball elements are blended into a coherent whole here, with a flair and seeming effortlessness reminiscent of Super Mario Odyssey. And remember, the entire thing can be played in a seamless drop-in, drop-out co-op, making for a grand old time if you're looking for something to sit down and play with your children, or less experienced players, or anyone. Yes, there are a few weak points here and there, most notably with regards to the game's penchant for wheeling out the same handful of mini-bosses ad nauseum, and some levels do feel like they recycle the same tricks one too many times, but by and large what's here works and it works well. It's a beautiful looking thing as well, absolutely jam-packed full of environmental detail and lovely little animations that, besides a couple of very minor frame rate wobbles, manages to play and perform almost perfectly in both docked and handheld modes. Each and every one of the worlds you bound through here looks and sounds the absolute business, from the lush overgrown ruins of natural plains to the crystal clear waters of Everbay Coast, it really is great looking stuff that's driven by a delightfully triumphant orchestral score. We love the range of expressions Kirby shows off in this adventure too. His personality really shining through in the side glances, grimaces, panicked looks, and wonderfully caring little smiles that he dishes out to Waddle Dees as he rescues them. The little details here almost left us feeling bad for some of our expressive enemies here at times, most especially the game's doggos who don't seem to know whether they're meant to be bad guys or not. You'll find them asleep and blowing bubbles on a bench before they stir to life and take stock and- Oh, oh yes, that's it! I'm, I'm a baddie, that's right. <laughs> it's just delightful. After the somewhat disappointingly safe Kirby Star allies, this latest adventure feels like a proper celebration for Kirby. A great big 30th anniversary bash that's stuffed to the gills with fun times, a grand and suitably OTT main campaign, tons of side activities, mini-games and collectibles and seamless co-op play and more besides. Kirby in the Forgotten Land 
Land is the very best this franchise has been since Kirby Planet Robobot, and if you know how much we like Robobot, you'll know that's quite the recommendation. Kirby in the Forgotten Land is a great big colourful joyride of an adventure for our pink little pal. This first fully three-dimensional mainline entry in the franchise is bursting at the seams with fun and inventiveness, managing to transpose everything we love about the past Kirby games to this all-new arena whilst adding plenty of delightful new aspects as it goes. Mouthful mode is just as daftly entertaining as it looks in the trailers, each and every level is packed full of secrets and dripping in wonderful detail, and there are enough side activities, collectibles and co-op fun here to keep you entertained and coming back for more for a good long while. What a grand way to celebrate 30 years of Planet Popstar's finest. You've reached the end of the video, that means it's time for Alex's personal thoughts. Um, I haven't played the full game, <laughs> but I have played the demo, and whilst I'm not going to go on for ages about such a short experience, I will express some opinions about the demo, which um, will relate to the full game as well. Um, I, I really liked it. I really liked it. <laughs>